Hi, it's Paul here from Transport Vlog, and today I am at Talawong, so the uh, the top end of Sydney Metro. And this is the first of three videos where I'm going to film the Sydney Metro train from the front, so like the driver's eye view if there was a driver. And this video, I'm going to uh, take the train to Vela Vista, so basically covering the overground section of Sydney Metro. And then the second video, and there'll be links to these in the description below, will be from Vela Vista to Epping. And then the third video will be from Epping to Chatswood. So let's start the journey from Talawong to Bella Vista. So here is the Talawong to Bella Vista section on the map. It's all above ground and the majority of it is on elevated sections. Before I jump on the train, I just want to explain a little bit about Talawong Station. Talawong Station has an island platform which comprises of Platform 2 on the left and Platform 3 on the right. So where is Platform 1, I hear you ask? Well, there is a third line and this allows trains coming from the maintenance facility to bypass Talawong Station and go directly to Rouse Hill. If a platform were to be added in the future and there is space to do this, then it would be known as Platform 1. Here is the track diagram for trains entering and exiting Talawong Station. The majority of trains start from Platform 2 and then they switch over to the upline as you can see in this diagram. Getting into Platform 2 from the downline is a little bit more straightforward. Departing trains rarely use Platform 3 but when they do, this is the way that they go. Terminating trains that then continue to the maintenance facility often come in on Platform 3 by branching off the downline. This is taken from the bridge on Kudjigong Road. The line on the left and closest to us is the line that doesn't have a platform at Talawong Station. The two tracks merging to the right of this go into Platform 2 and the other two tracks further right go into Platform 3. Notice the points indicator here. It's not a signal. More on this later. Look out for the train leaving Platform 2. As soon as this train clears the junction, another train can come into Platform 2. And as it's the middle of the afternoon peak with a train running every four minutes, this is exactly what happens. Sydney Metro uses CBTC, which stands for Communication Based Train Control. One of the things that CBTC does is the automatic changing of points, and this is exactly what has happened just here. So let's now see the section from Talawong to Rouse Hill from the front of a Sydney Metro train. So my train is on platform two. The line to the left is the through line that I mentioned earlier. You can see potentially where a platform could go in the future. On the other side of the island platform is platform three. As Sydney Metro uses communication based train control, there are no track circuits and there are no signals. So what you see here is a point indicator and it will display red until the route is set. Route now set. As we start moving, notice the point indicator displaying a white diagonal line to indicate the junction that we're going to take. When the track is at ground level, conventional sleepers and ballast are used. As soon as we clear all these junctions, the line becomes elevated. This was filmed in the late afternoon when there's a train about every four minutes, so you'll see plenty of trains coming in the other direction, like this one. As we leave the elevated section, it's back to conventional sleepers and ballast. Notice the cable housing on both sides. It's a bit more obvious on the left side. 
These house the various cables to allow the successful operation of Sydney Metro. We are now approaching the cable stayed bridge that will take the line over the very busy Windsor Road. This bridge is 270 metres long and it is the first cable stayed railway bridge that has been built on a curve in Australia. The bridge also marks the start of the elevated Skytrain section. The line is now elevated until the approach to Bella Vista station. We are arriving at Ralph Hill. Notice the yellow blocks between the two running rails. These are known as beacons, tags or ballasts. These, in combination with the train's onboard computer, identify the exact location of this train. These yellow beacons seem to be closer together in stations, and this is probably to help align the train with the platform doors. The bridge is a similar design to the Anzac Bridge. It has 16 cable pipes. The longest is 62 metres. Within those 16 cable pipes are 127 steel cables. The two towers are 45 metres high. Let's continue the journey now from Rouse Hill to Kellyville. This section is long enough and straight enough for Sydney Metro trains to reach 100 kilometres an hour. Here is another train coming into view. There are 22 sets in total and each set has six carriages. So here is a little more detail on the role of the yellow beacons that you can see between the running rails. Instead of using GPS technology, which wouldn't be accurate enough and wouldn't work in tunnels, the train's onboard computer is constantly measuring the distance between the last beacon, along with the current train's speed. It then performs a calculation to determine the exact train location. The calculated precise location of the train is constantly sent to wireless access points. Keep watching and I'll show you an example of a wireless access point in a moment. Coming up on the left is a set of emergency stairs. The voltage of the overhead wires is 1500 volts DC. This is the same voltage as the Sydney Trains network. Here is another emergency exit appearing on the left. Now crossing Windsor Road, you can see it on the left. Old Windsor Road is now on the right, and if you look closely, you might be able to see it. On the elevated sections, notice that there are no sleepers or ballast. Instead, the track is attached to what looks like a concrete track bed. If you know more about how this is done, do let me know in the comments. Notice that the electric wires drift very slightly to the left and then to the right. This is to prevent wear and tear being concentrated on one part of the train's pantograph. If you speed up the video, this will be much more obvious. Although the trains are currently six cars long, the platforms are designed to cater for eight car trains in the future. This is why the trains stop short at the end of the platform. The next section from Kellyville to Bella Vista is very interesting. It features a crossover junction and then the line descends to be about six metres underground at Bella Vista station. Now you remember those wireless access points I was talking about earlier? Here is one in the distance. For 
These access points are about 500 metres apart, so see if you can spot any others. Here's another one coming into view now. Very shortly the line begins to descend towards Bella Vista Station. Now leaving the elevated section, which means we're back to normal ballast and concrete sleepers. And here is the first crossover from the down line to the up line. And then from the up line to the down line. The ballast and sleepers end at the start of the Bella Vista platform. We are arriving at Bella Vista. You can see the entrance to the tunnel at the end of this platform. Look closely at the overhead wires as they change to a rigid overhead conductor instead. And this is what will be used from here to Epping. To see and understand the crossover junction more clearly, here is an action replay of the section coming into Bella Vista. This is at half speed. Notice the points indicator just here. The first crossover is most likely to be used if the tunnel is blocked for any reason. So the service would terminate at Kellyville Station and then use this crossover to transfer from the up line back to the down line. The second crossover would be used by any trains that terminate at Bella Vista by allowing them to switch from the down line to the up line and then back into Bella Vista station. Here's another view of the overhead wire changing to a rigid overhead conductor. This rigid overhead conductor system will also be used on the tunnel sections of the City and South West extension to Sydney Metro that is opening in 2024. So I hope you enjoyed this front of the train view from Talawong to Bella Vista. If you did, I have two more in this series. So there's Bella Vista to Epping and then Epping to Chatswood. And I'll put links to both those videos in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and do leave a comment below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.